Oh, you see that one just try to take the plug from his mouth? Hi folks, Captain Mike here from Salty Cape. Today I am pre-fishing Memorial Day weekend here in Vineyard Sound. And today I'm at Middle Ground where the squid are here and the bass are on top of them chasing these small and big squid around. So the name of the game today, our approach, is going to be stemming the tide in front of the rip, casting plugs whenever possible. We have a north wind in front in the smooth water and popping them or working them as they swing into the rip. And uh, so this is the perfect time of year. Um, you never know how the fish is going to be, you know, because the season swings quite a bit from year to year. Uh, but this year seems like things are pretty average. It's a good year. The sea bass season opened last weekend. Uh, the sea bass are here, the big scup, certainly striped bass in all sizes. It's go time and uh, right on cue for Memorial Day weekend. So we're rip fishing and what we're gonna do is position the boat just in front of the rip in the smooth water. We're gonna cast up tide and we're gonna swing the plugs right in the rip where the bass are gonna be in ambush, chasing the squids and hopefully our popper. So I'm just sneaking up to the rip, super slow, super steady. Don't wanna create a whole lot of commotion. These fish are aggressive but too much pressure with boats powering different directions will put these fish down despite how many you have. So you wanna go nice and slow, slow and steady and catch fish all morning. So I'm just idling up to my position. It's really tempting to charge around to these schools, but they move back and forth with the squid. I can see them hot and heavy down there. But what you wanna do is find a nice little feature in the rip that's gonna pen bait in, I, I call it a gully. There's like a little gully of water here and the squid get penned in, so I just tiptoe up. You don't want to disturb the fish. You're gonna cast out in front and swing it in. So you wanna cast up in a smooth water. Now there's a lot of wind, so I'm quick to get control of my line. Then I'm just with short rod tip actions and a medium rail retrieve conjunction with each other, I'm just gonna pop this bait as it just swings down tide. And sometimes when you get close to the boat, sometimes they'll chase it, but I just bring it in. And the best part of your cast is up in the smooth water. Now you're gonna let it swing into the rip. You just pop it, short rod tip action. It's gonna pop as you go into the rip here. Look at that big bass under that gull. Oh, there we go. So you can see the strong current here. I have a little bit of heavier gear. I'm gonna take the boat out of gear to slide back. These aren't very big fish. You know, they're healthy slot fish, but they're not massive. But still, with this strong current here at middle ground, the fish can get you know, good leverage of their broad tails downstream, down current, I should say. And when we're drifting with the fish, it feels real light there for a sec. Now it's getting a little more drag on me. This guy's taking me up current. So we've come up on a uh, topwater feed of stripers chasing squid. And I am going to put this translucent amber popper on. So if you look in the squid in the water, they are, I would argue they're more amber than any other color. This amber and pink squid plug uh, colored popper is the, uh, the way to go. But stripers tend to hit from the head 
I feel that this um, aft hook back here, this back treble, is overkill. So I'm going to take this off the plug. I'm just going to fish with the front hook. All the plugs at Hoagie are designed to be swam with both hooks or with just the front hook. And we're going to uh, minimize damage to the fish by just taking that back hook off. So now I just have this front treble. Stripers tend to hit from the head, so I'm not at all worried about my hookup ratio, but now I'm just worried about minimizing injuries to the fish because we're gonna release all our fish today. So what I'm gonna do is crimp down the barbs on this plug. And I just have a nice pair of high quality pliers. And these are just the, you know, just the small size Vanstall pliers. And I'm going to mat these barbs down. And I just have the single hook in the front. The lure's going to swim great. You don't need that back hook to swim in or anything. We're going to hook up the same amount of fish, but we just need the front hook for these big stripers. So my lure is ready to go. My aft hook is removed. My barbs are crimped down for easy release. I'm just going to talk about this lure real quickly. Now you'll notice that this is the amber color. It's translucent and uh, my favorite poppers tend to have that translucent quality to them. Now I like the amber color. Uh, you know, a lot of people think of pink or white for squid imitations but if you look at them swimming like in an aquarium or an underwater video they're often that amber translucence color. That's why I like this color so much. And there is, in this particular lure, a contrasting pink color. Now, this popper comes with rattles. These rattles serve two purposes. One, obviously, for the noise. So when the lure goes pop, pop, you know, follows with the rattles. And so it makes a lot of commotion. But you'll notice how the rattles or the weights are distributed in this lure. They're pointed, they're, they're, they're heavy towards the back in the chambers. Now, that's going to give the lure um, extra punch in the wind for superior casting. So all in all, um, using the Charter Gray Popper, it's great for casting in the wind, great for imitating squid, and it's mod modified to minimize damage. talk about fish care just for a minute. Uh, we're spring fishing here, lots of topwater bass. The good news about the spring is there's lots of big sea bass around. So I'm going to catch and release stripers today and bring a sea bass home for fish tacos. So just to recap, I've taken the back hook off this plug. I've taken the barbs off the front hook and I'm going to do all in the water releases. Now to land this fish, we're releasing our fish today. This appears to be a slot fish, which is cool, but uh, we're gonna release this fish. So what I'm gonna do is keep this fish in the water. Now, a good rule of thumb, as I always say, a rod's length of line, in this case, maybe a little more than a rod's length of line. That way I can put the rod in the holder. You can see how this fish is still in the surface. I can get down. I can grab the lure and I can get control of the fish. So this is what's great about taking that back hook off. You see this fish had no problem getting the front hook. So that's one less hook to injure the fish and also one less hook to injure me. And as you recall, I mashed the barb down on this hook and it just pops right out of the fish. So you hang it there. Now I'm going to release it. Kept it in the water this whole time, and off it goes. Keep them wet. So the three tenants to the keep fish wet organization and mentality is one, minimize handling time. Two, keep the fish out of water for less than 10 seconds. And three, no dry hand. So my theory is if you leave this fish in the water while you unhook it, you solve all three elements here. I've taken my back hook off, so that's no longer in the fish's eye. The barbs have been removed from this front hook. 
I don't even need pliers. It just slides right out. Just have to remember to keep a tight line when fighting it. This fish has not left the water. And there we go. In addition to minimizing hooks on your plug, is using gear that's heavy enough to land the fish. You know, I still consider this a light tackle outfit, but I've got 40 pound braid and a 30 pound leader. And uh, you know, I'm in strong current, so I need the brawn to land the fish quickly. And so a quicker release is a healthier release. So if you watch my videos, you'll know that I pretty much just have two striper spinning outfits for the boat, a seven foot light tackle and a seven foot medium heavy. And uh, when I'm out in the boat, out in the sound targeting stripers that I would say are you know, above schoolie grade, I always go with a medium heavy outfit. Um, you know, in this case, I have a Saragossa 6,000 class reel, 40 pound braid, 30 pound test fluoro, and just a nice medium heavy outfit. You know, here in Vineyard Town, near Tucket Town, we have strong currents, bigger fish. So I want the ro a rod strong enough where I can, you know, land a fish quickly and get a nice, safe, healthy release. But I also want something just light enough uh, where, you know, I can throw a plug. Um, this outfit's rated for, um, you know, I'm happy casting lures with this outfit, say from half ounces on the lighter end of the spectrum, but all the way up to two ounces. This is an older rod uh, from Shimano. It's in their Therese series. Uh, but any seven foot medium heavy rod is a good utility rod to have, you know, here on Cape Cod. And uh, you can't go wrong with a 5,000 or 6,000 class uh, spinning reel. And again, 30 or 40 pound test braid. In this case, I have 40 braid, 30 fluoro, about an ounce and a half popper. And I'm good to go for pretty much any top water striper fishing. You can imagine here on Cape Cod with this outfit. Now what a perfect way to end the day of topwater striper fishing. We had lots of great eats, catch and release stripers. In my opinion, I have the better table fare right here. This big sea bass, the season just opened. So I'm gonna have fish tacos for today and stripers for later. <laughs>